Our researchers looked into the life of Altair Ibn Lahad, hoping to find a biography that might serve as a positive role model for Abstergo's global outreach programs. Unfortunately, this renegade assassin proved to be no such thing. In much of his footage, we see a man gleefully flouting some of his culture's most entrenched taboos with an arrogance that borders on messianic. Altair, no, this is not our way. To burn a man's body is forbidden. Many of our researchers felt that the arguments articulated by Altair's rival, a man known as Abbas, were clearer and more cogent than any we heard from Altair. I recently put in a request that more effort be dedicated to locating one of Abbas's descendants, if any exist. It's clear to us that Altair's transgressions were the primary motivation behind the ultimate dissolution of his despicable order by the middle of the 13th century. We therefore strongly recommend a pass on this property in favor of a more agreeable and inspiring figure from this era.
Our initial reports gave us hope that Enzio Auditori would serve as an ideal candidate for future Abstergo projects. His charisma, sexual magnetism, and wry humor gave him all the qualities of a leading man. However, his corruption by the Assassin Order robbed him of these qualities as he fell deeper and deeper into a spiral of revenge. Enzio was frequently known to articulate a passive acceptance of evil. He was also a man of ugly contradictions, one who preached free thought, yet traveled well beyond his home country to proselytize his corrupted creed, just as he's doing here with this impressionable Chinese girl. Notice, too, that in his gestures and bearing, there is still something of the old lecher in him. Enzio's entire personality is built around pure demagoguery, claiming his philosophy is about love when violence and coercion are his primary means of tackling problems. We have therefore come to the conclusion that Enzio Auditori da Firenze would be a risky character to develop.
Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, January 11th, 1981. Host Eileen Bach, DNA sample SB1970. Miriam? Miriam, is that you? Are you in here? Bartle! Oh, thank God you're safe. You've been very sick. Bartle, how did they find you? Oh, Jesus, what would they do to you? Has they hurt you at all? I told them nothing. All they do every day is ask about you and that artifact. But I didn't tell them anything. Nothing. I know you didn't, Miriam. But how are you? You aren't hurt. Not badly, no. I'm fine. Good. We need to get a message out to Oscar. Somehow. We, we need to tell him where... Very interesting footage, Eileen. This is Germany, you said. World War II? Most of the memories I've been able to access come from a period where Miriam was imprisoned by Nazis in Cologne. Miriam. Is she still alive? No, she was my husband's... Mo my ex-husband's mother. She passed away about five years ago. Well, she was spirited. An impressive lady. Definitely. And the man, Bartle. He made reference to an artifact. Any idea what that is? My team is looking into that, but it's not our first priority. We still need... It is now. Really? You must have other recordings of this woman. Are there any other mentions of this artifact I should know about? Half a dozen or so, yes. What's this about? You have questions. I understand that. I don't have answers for you. Not right now, but I do have money. And if you get me those recordings and bring me any other artifact references you find, then I will triple your operating budget for as long as I can. Triple my budget? My God, what is this? 9 a.m. Monday morning, my office. We have a lot to discuss. But Lillian, I don't... Have a good weekend, Mrs. Bach. Fantastic work. Hi, it's Eileen. Hey, how are you? Good. Busy. Cold. The winter's been terrible. Ah, uh, Seamus won't like that. The weather's been mild out here. Well, he's only coming for a month. He'll live. And I'll be so busy, he won't have to worry about his mother bothering him. Ah. Uh, still working 12-hour days? I should move a bed into my lab. Look, if you're too busy, Seamus can stay with me. No, no. I want to see him. We'll have fun. You're not too busy to be a mom and a genius. Of course not. His flight lands at... 8.15 p.m. tomorrow night. You'll be there? Of course. 8.15. P.m. Let him know you'll be there. Thanks, Carl. I need to run. I'm sorry. Take care. You too. Ah, Eileen. Didn't see you come in. I'm not interrupting. No, it's fine. The subject is unconscious. He's traipsing around 18th century New Orleans right now. In the memories of a woman. That must feel odd. How long has he been under? 83 minutes. Whoa. It's average. What can I do for you? I just wanted to... to thank you for sending Lillian to see me. She came away very impressed. There. You see, all these bureaucrats need is a little glimpse of our secrets every so often. They like to feel like they're still in charge. Lillian is most definitely in charge. She just tripled my budget. Tripled? Christ, Eileen. You must have discovered who killed Kennedy. <laughs> well, she heard something on one of my tapes that interested her. Something about an artifact. Very vague, but it was enough. An artifact? What sort of artifact? Jesus, get him out of there! Get him out! Oh my God. It'll kill him! He's not the couple! He's having a fucking seizure! Power down! Now! Heart rate 170! Power down! Now! Eileen, Warren here. I was all ready to apologize for the late call, but you seem to be away. Maybe with your son. Uh, listen, since the unfortunate incident with Subject One, there's been a lot of dire talk around the office about my Animus project, about shutting it down, about it being unsafe. Typical top brass bullshit. 
And if they shut me down, then your surrogate initiative goes away too. I'm sure you're already well aware of that. Well, let me be the first to reassure you. This will not happen. I will not let them take this from me, from us. I will not let one death of an undiagnosed epileptic, I should add, I will not let this destroy the decades of incredible research done by our predecessors and the five years I've spent perfecting the Animus. There's still more work to be done and countless rewards to be reaped. So I wanted you to be the first to know. I have decided to volunteer myself as my second subject. I am convinced that the Animus is perfectly safe, provided I stay within the boundaries of my own ancestral bloodline. Next week, I plan to prove this by staying a full four hours in the Animus. I would be grateful if you and your team would monitor my progress. And after this necessary but ridiculous proof of concept, I give you my word that I will work closely with you to solve your outstanding problems. Your surrogate initiative is a bold idea, and I do believe it is the future of the Animus project. But while we have the Animus itself, I do not want to waste precious opportunities to prove its safety. I'll see you in the office on Monday. Goodbye. I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man. I have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will, with no constraint. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. Why have you done so? Because it is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress. Being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because her promise made to me has not been. How is he? Our three doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executions. <laughs> Surprise. Eileen. Uh, Yesterday, Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual renderer, and I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A, a few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If, if I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32, April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bach, DNA sample SV1970. Miriam, are you awake? What? Miriam, they're coming for me. Who is? The guards? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. Basil, don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me. They will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't. I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush. Now, if I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. The spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Sam, seven! Sam! Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. 
I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your, your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic, he called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research, memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over! Damn it! Eileen, we just talked about my mother, just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl, if he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years. And I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just... just take care of yourself. Morning, Eileen. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Eileen, are you all right? Sorry, yeah. I'm fine. Just a little... scattered. Biddy called my ex-husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be faster using Vidic's animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just... let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Senori. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. <laughs> 